it's summertime, I think. Summertime. So we're in third winter in Michigan. That's what I was about to ask. In the chat, everybody tell me the temperature right now. Hold on a second. I don't know what it is here in Nashville. Hey, Google, what's the temperature? You just said everybody's off. Great. It is, I'll put it in the chat, 77 degrees, 70 in Dallas. It is 76 for D. It's Pedro in Connecticut, I think. 46 for Pedro. Dang. Wow. Okay. So we're just now coming out of it. Just finally putting that shovel back in the garage. <laughs> that was for me and my family. I knew that summer was finally here when my dad said, okay, you can put the shovel back in the garage. I was like, yes, I can start breaking out my flip-flops and my board shorts. I wasn't much of a wasn't much of a pool kid. Was wanted to be the lifeguard, but I was never really I knew I wasn't going to be the good-looking lifeguard, so I decided to forego that. I didn't hang out in pools too much because of chlorine, but other than that, I do remember that summertime brought on a new soundtrack. Something new would permeate the airwaves whenever we were at the either the community pool or school vacation, we would hear a new onslaught of music on the radio. 93 Zoo FM. 93 Zoo FM back in my hometown. That was like the flamethrower top 40 radio station. There was the night guy who was always the first one to break the new music. And he was always so excited for summertime because that's when the labels would be pushing to get that music on the radio. And he would spin that music to death. I remember songs like, oh God, Ace of Bass, Chumba Wumba. <laughs> Yeah, who else? Give me some other summertime. LFO. Help me with the throwback summer songs. Help me out. Summer Girls. Summer Girls, yes. LFO. Here's uh, a groove slightly transformed. Uh, Just a bit of a break yep. from summertime. the norm. Will Smith, uh, uh, Jazzy uh, Jeff. Uh, Nacero, summertime. Yeah. Summertime, summertime. <laughs> so there's always that, that, that uplift. We come out of the shovel period <laughs> where we're tossing snow left and right out of the driveway. And now the, the clouds start to part and the music begins to change. And... I'm not feeling it this year yet. I'm not feeling it this year because something is holding us back from finding that new music. And I, really, honestly, I don't think there's a 93 Zoo FM anymore. I don't think there's an FM jock anymore to tell us what the new music is. There, there used to be that focal point, that tower on the mountain, metaphorically and physically, that would tell you what the hits were. Now, Crate Hackers derives from the philosophy of radio and hits upon hits. And right now we are in a weird, I don't know where, is it, is it because of the loss of radio? Is it because of our loss of heroes? Or is it that we've just grown cynical during the summertime? Maybe that, that, that vitamin D really isn't boosting us the way it used to? What is it? Let's find that block and discuss. And as a result, we're going to walk away with a crate that's going to lift our spirits, get those dance floors moving, and just get us out of this creative rut because I'm feeling it in the industry. One in the chat if you're feeling this with me because we're stuck. Something's going on and we got to figure this out because summertime is knocking on our door and I don't have a crate fresh enough yet. Do you feel me? Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Alan. So listen, this is none other than a crate hackathon. I'm talking summertime vibes. 706 currently in Nashville, Tennessee, 77 degrees out. And our schedule is like this. Take a look at the screen. Everyone look at your screen. Look at your screen. Look at my view. 10 minutes of introductions. Every can keep the ones flowing for radio, getting the crowd going from 655 to 7, warming the crowd up. And then we've got me basically just trying to paint a picture for you for the first 10 minutes, explaining how a hackathon works. If you are a brand new hackathon attendee, Let's see that one. Are you new? Cool, because I want to get to know you on a personal basis. Hello. Oh, Rick Fisher. All right, Karen. Hello, Karen. I want to get to know you personally. Tag me in Facebook, get to know each other in the community. Tacoma, Washington. Yeah, man. All right, cool. I'm from Spokane, Washington, believe it or not. Spent a lot of time in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, cool. Okay, so yeah, we'll get to know each other. So then we're going to move into our DJ round one, where I'm going to bring in some special guests, especially one major guest you do not want to miss out on. Boy, I can't wait. Vice is back. Oh, my God. And we're going to put them through a little game interaction for 10 minutes. Then we'll get into round two. So I think for the first round, we're just going to talk about the top five anthems we need to put in our crate tonight. So DJ round one will be top five summertime anthems we need tonight. Vice is going to help us with that. We'll get into a mystery game following. 
DJ round two, I think we should do a little spring cleaning. I think round two should be devoted to hacks, music organization tips, and peek into the mind of one of the best, most prolific and open format DJs you can find in the industry right now. DJ Vice is going to open up his DJ software and let you peek inside. That's sick. Okay, that's something to definitely hang out for. Then we're going to throw another game at you. Following that, round three, I want to go back into Vice's crate, and I want to just pick his brain a little bit more and learn about a summertime crate that he has. Then I'll share mine, and then we'll, we'll go back and forth. But are you ready? Is anybody more excited than me? We're talking about a headliner. We're talking about a man who, who's just from Miami to L.A. Before I bring him in, before I, I wrote a little something up for him. Got to make this official. Got to make this official. Crate Hackers, please welcome Vice, an exceptional DJ who has taken the music industry by storm with the unique ability to create, blend, and produce music that transcends genres. This LA native has become a trailblazer in the industry, performing at the hottest clubs in the country for sold-out crowds. Named one of America's best DJs, Vice presence can be felt everywhere from the center of the crowd to the heart of the music that he creates. I wrote this, by the way. Inspired by his extensive travels, Vice's music has a distinct ability to take listeners on a journey around the world, infusing every track with a sense of adventure that transports him from Ibiza, Tokyo, London, Hong Kong. We're talking EDM songs, relaxing poolside beats, which we'll focus on today, a hint of adventure in every single song that Vice has created, making him one of the most sought after DJs in the industry. I need more ones than ever before. Hey. Give it up for DJ Vice, y'all. Give it up. Dang, that was hot. Thank Chat God for that. G- <laughs> Might have been. Aaron GPT. You notice how the production value of the show has just improved ever since that's. Wow. wow, that was great. Uh, if, if, that, if that was Chat GPT, I'm going to ask for a refund on the guy who wrote my last bio and just <laughs> get, go to Chat GPT because that was hot. I'm taking that one for sure. <laughs> You're not in Los Angeles right now. I am not. I put a 78 in the weather chat. I put that in the room, 78. I don't know what it is in LA right now, but I definitely don't get 78. I don't know. 62 in LA, I see right here, but I'm in nicer, warmer weather right now, but we'll get into that later. I'm enjoying the view as I speak. Oh, this is a (laughs) foreshadowing, I see. But yeah, I do see a trend because this is year two of us bringing back a familiar topic for you. Something about summertime that just resonates with you. Tell me why. Oh, man, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, so I've always been blessed with good weather. So I think that I feel for everybody out there that might still be stuck in some cold vibes, but I always feel like I'm living like a summertime life. So I think that travels with me to every city I go to. And I think you could agree with me coming up in radio as well. You you see the ebb and flow of the season. Summertime brings us new anthems. Speak Mm. on that. Yeah, it, do, I, do I already want to go this route? It did. Yeah, it see? Did for so long that we had from the classic, for me as a, as, as a 30-year DJ, like when Summertime by Jazzy Jeff came out, I was like, ah, or Feel Me Flow by Naughty by Nature came out. You're like, yes. And then for us LA guys, we played the Dove Shack, Summertime in the LBC. And we're like, yes, we got Summertime smashes. So right now to even wrap my head around starting a summertime crate i'm like where do we even start what is this summer we're about to kick open summer like i have a i have my first pool party coming up in vegas in two weeks and i'm like how is my set going to be any different than the nighttime set right so where are we going with this what's going to happen and this is where i come to you guys so we do it as a community to the crate hacker family and we work together because we're all in this together right you're right and I think we have to go back and maybe look back at history and maybe circle back on the feeling of last year. Is mm. there anything we can resurrect for starters? Like songs that maybe we need to think about. Maybe, let me buy you some time here. and We'll talk about this while you open up your record box. I'm hoping maybe mm. you have your computer in front of you because I'm going to start asking you for, like for your top five in a minute here. The reason why I think we're at a standstill is because new music is just so vast. There's so much new music coming out that people are resorting to the classics more and more. You're getting more requests for throwbacks than ever before. Yes, that is the norm. Thankfully, the bad bunnies are calming down. It's like that one clown in the crowd that still wants to be like, 
Bad Bunny. And you're like, we get it, bro. Or we get it, girl. Calm down. Like that wave is gone. So hey, we're getting to, we're getting the other request. For some reason, like in three different cities, I've seen party in the USA over and over. And that was in different cities. And it's always by a female requesting it. Okay. And the other one that was really interesting just recently, and I would say this girl was like 22 years old and she was like doing her best to get up like to the front of the DJ booth to shove her phone and ah. Uh, and I was like, at that point, I want to see what it is. Cause like we're, D- we're DJs and, and it's just, it intrigues me to be like, what matters to you that much <laughs> that you need to hear this song? And it was Baby Bash Cyclone with Stop T-Pain it. on it. Stop yes. it. Yes. So I'm like, you weren't even born when that song came out. Like you definitely, I mean, she was probably 22 is how old is baby bash cyclone? Like it's a great record. I liked it when it came out. I was on radio, I think around that time, but um, like it meant the world to her to show baby bash cyclone T-Pain play this. Mike, Michael Jim says, I had a guy come up last week and ask me, excuse me, sir. Do you have party in the United States of America by Miss Miley? Ah, yes. yes <laughs> a guy yes. asked for it even. That's exactly how he said it too. <laughs> exactly how he said it. You know oh, what it man. is? I think we are stuck in this. It's finally catching up with music, but the sequel itis, the member berries. I think South Park did an episode on member berries where they would like subconsciously plant these, hey, let's bring back that beautiful memory you used to have because the future and today really freaking sucks. So here, let's give you those mm. things that just buy you and give you that feeling of good nature. I right. think that's what we need. And there's that suppression of is it really worth it to be an artist and make very little money today that the inspiration is even there to make amazing prolific mm. today. Could it be that, or just people need that escape? Yeah. That's the question. Really, right. Yeah. Where, are we? That Where are we? Where are we? All right. Let's, let's focus on the here and now then. If we were to be talking mm-hmm. about a pool party starting say tomorrow, let's say yeah. you have your music in front of you, like out of the gates, first song mm-hmm. you'd push play on, what would be that banger for the summer? That, that's a big push. I know, it's a loaded one. <laughs> and I am very blessed that I play in different cities and different markets. So I'm, I, it depends like where I'm at, right? And what the vibe would be for each of them. If I was to say I want to come out the gate banging and it's going to be more, I'm going to lean more hip hop in this lane, I could literally start with little Uzi Vert, Just Want to Rock. And mm-hmm. with a, a demographic of 21 to 28, I know, no brainer, it's just going to get, the energy, ah, because with that tempo of it being 150 or 75, whatever way you want to go, it would just bring that boost of energy. I don't know. I'm interested to hear if it's working for everybody else. In the rooms that I'm playing, it has been working. And it is such a unique record to hear because it's kind of Jersey Club, but it's hip hop, but it's mm-hmm. most pop in a way because Uzi Vert is so mainstream big. That song has smashed it for me every time whether I'm in New York, whether I'm in Vegas or Miami, like in those cities. I am interested to know if it's- Speak if up in the chat, y'all, is a little Uzi Vert, I Just Want to Rock. Number one song in America, by the way, right now on Rhythmic. Is this- Is it? I didn't even know that. I working even, for I you. Is it working for you? Tell me. Ron L says, definitely. I have to play it on Rhythmic Radio, says Philip. Splice. Says, huh? That's my boy Splice, DJ Splice, Philip Guzman. Where are you? Oh, getting a lot of comments of songs to play. There might be a little bit of delay, but people are making suggestions on what songs they would play. Oh, Shoot. yeah. John Summit is recommending the Bump Bump remix. Wonder who made that one. Hey. He is a producer, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Anything by Enya says, Eddie, love it. Wow. he's He must be going on them like real summertime retreats, like those yeah. <laughs> unplugged summertime uh-huh. retreats. Uh-huh. So here's what we can do to get the ball rolling. I want to play a little game with you and we're going to play a round of ones and zeros. You down with this? I'm down with this. Here's how this works. Ah. Ones and zeros is pretty simple. With your keyboard, you just type a one or you type a zero. And gosh, I just realized that we haven't even looked at today's crate yet. We need to unlock today's crate to get to ones and zeros. So follow along with me. Here's how you can access tonight's crate. And Vice hasn't even seen it. Vice hasn't unlocked it. Let's take a peek behind the curtain, and then we're going to play a round of ones and o's. And again, it's a song that either you're going to play or you're not. One if you do, zero if you don't. That's the premise of ones and zeros. Ready to play? Ready. Let's go, let's go. Unlocking the crate, unlocking the crate. Lots of pages in front of me here, but I'm going to go more importantly to crateoftheweek.com. Everyone, if you want to follow along with me, go to crateoftheweek.com. And... 
Creativeweek.com is going to portal you to a locked page. But us as hackers, we know how to get behind the closed doors, right? <clears throat> to unlock this door, you need to give us two songs to suggest. I'm going to take two for now from DJ Vice. I asked him for his top five, but we'll at least unlock this crate. Are you ready? I'm ready, dog. What you got for me? I, I gave Uzi Vert, but I'm going to be honest real quick. I feel I didn't know it was number one at Rhythm Radio. So that kind of blows my mind. I didn't, I haven't been following up with the radio charts. If I would flip it and go in a house mode and I would be in summertime vibes, I would definitely go Fisher. Yeah, the girls. Ooh. Okay. I'm with you. Yeah. Take a listen to that really quick. Okay. Just practice with this one. Give me one or a zero, y'all. One or zero. Would you play this song in your set? Ed Carey says one. DJ Vice, of course, he says one. Ty says one. Eddie says one. Mike says, yeah, it's house. Of course I'm going to play it. Fisha, it's a killer. Pedro says uh, one. Getting a lot of love from Ed Carey and Anne. That's how it works. That's how it works, Vice. We're just going to play a little round of that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're going to unlock the crate with your next song request. What is it going to be? So I have been, I fought with this back and forth in my head because I wasn't sure if I wanted to play this record. All right. But it's that Pink Panther is an Ice Spice Boy's a Liar part oh, two. Oh, okay. I can tell you, I can tell you just by charts, part two, the part two remix is more popular. But yeah. let's give a listen to the original just to get everyone up to speed. Would you play? Yeah. Would you play this? One or zeros. One zeros. It says one. Eddie says zero. Got a two from Mark. He's breaking the rules for this song. <laughs> one from Pedro. Zero from John. Paul says zero. I says one. Earworm. Yeah, very split. What would? What about part two? Let's t yeah, part two. The one with the uh, who's on that? Doja. Is it Ice Spice? I Spice. Ice Spice. Yeah. Ice Spice. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying. Uh, if anything, I would play part two. But here, let's uh, do this now. Before I unlock this, it only takes two. And everyone can do this. If I'm getting some questions in the chat. Where do you find this? Go to crateoftheweek.com, crateoftheweek.com. Of course, you must- You know, what, you know what that kind of gave me a feeling of when I heard it? Because my friend, Neil Jackson out in New York put me up on it er, like earlier. And he's, oh, I gotta be on this song. And I listened to it. And I was like, is this the modern day, like my boo? Like at night, I think, I don't know, just had that feeling of, it's, I know it's a little more Jersey clubbish, but like, the song feels very corny to me, but cool at the same time. I'm such in the cross mix of- What is that word I'm looking for? It's almost like, <laughs> it, it feels gamified. It feels sped up. I know that's a big thing for TikTok. Hyper pop. Hyper pop, like that's the term. Hyper pop, yeah. It feels like very hyper pop. Happening a lot. Getting some, uh, we were talking about it last week. Uh, one of our members was getting a ton of requests for that exclusively. Okay, I'm unlocking the crate. Watch this. Oh, okay. Now, before I show you this, let me again explain. And I was all up in the crate right now. I know you. I know everybody was. So people tend to doubt us as curators sometimes. I get it. Everyone has their own opinion. But again, I'm going off of strict analytics and data. So my mm -hmm. personal opinion is completely taken out of the picture. So no harm, no foul. I'm not going to, you were to say to me, no, Aaron, that song is going to suck. We're going to take it out. No, that's fine. But I'm just bringing to you what is currently 60% popularity or more, 60% danceability or more, 40% mood, and 40% energy. So that, that, that's what I'm sticking with. And so that's what we're about to share with you. So on the left side of the screen, you're going to see artificial intelligence. On the right side, you're going to see what the people in the chat are actually voting. Mm. You ready? Here we go. This is your Summertime Vibes Hackathon Crate for 2023. Let me zoom in just a little further. Again, on the left-hand side, all the metrics, all the data, all the people we're going to pick apart and destroy in ones and zeros. We're going to obliterate this crate because maybe some stuff is pretty stale. Maybe some songs just simply do not work. If that is the case, you must speak up because this crate will be stagnant without your help. And you can see it's already starting to happen. On the right-hand side, yeah. we're getting Michael, who just gave us Jazzy Jeff, Summertime with two votes. Now, if I wanted to vote that song up, I would give it a little thumbs up, but I'm not going to because just by sheer rebellion, that song needs to go away. Will Smith, <laughs> Will Smith I love you, but is, that's, yeah. <laughs> is it sheer rebellion? And then is it also a mixture of if you're DJing in a, in a bar, nightclub, lounge, let's just say the demographics 21 to 31? 
There you go. Do they really know that song or have a connection to it? Or are they like, what's this old hip hop song? I go. don't know. I don't know that yeah. answer. Yeah, time and place. I think demographic, older people like us, we'd feel it, but I'd we feel it. it. I'm going to Austin Strom. I still love this song. It's warm in my heart, cold heart, Pinal remix. Is it Pinal? 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 There's a remix of David Guetta, Family Affair. Check this one out. So I'll vote that one up. So that's how you interact with tonight's. Oh, look, we already got four votes. People loving it already. This is how it works. Mm. So Vice, you're in control. I'm going to spin up and down on this. Mm. We're going to play a round of ones and zeros. You tell me when to stop, okay? Stop. It landed on Danza Kaduro. Pay attention to the chat. Tell oh, me. I realized that was really loud. I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of work. Oh, Keep it going. Yo, yo. All right. That's a keeper. Let's do this again. Tell it never fails. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Don't forget my love. mark what do you think dj vice i, I think i think it was a great record i think it had its moment i don't think it stuck with people to really like have it across the summertime vibes i think it's a great song to listen to like it's yeah. a great listening song i never felt that it was a very big party song definitely a, a mood setter who said it best i think pedro said afternoon pool time yeah, just yeah. lounging by the pool, no energy. Lounging, no energy. Yeah, it's not to jump up and down and get people on the dance floor. I think it's just, it's cool. If you're hanging out by the pool, it's a great song to listen to. As a DJ, I wouldn't spin it in the middle of a great, in the middle of a song, a set. P paint a picture for, we'll come back to another round of this in a second, but pool parties in these mega resorts, these Vegas arenas and other places. Tell us what it's like for a DJ. What do you, what's that like? I feel that more than ever, it's, I saw it on a Instagram story. Someone nailed it. I, I don't know the DJ's name. Someone will probably shout it in there. They said it's like Tetris at level 10. Did everybody see that video where the guy was talking about what it's like to be a DJ? And he's, it looks like we're just pushing buttons, but we're playing Tetris at level 10. You know, <laughs> and I was like, it's so true. That's it so is. true. Because we're analyzing so much that's going on. And with these pool parties, the energy is so high. And so like through the roof that we have to keep up with that energy. And I feel that it's, it gets complicated at times right now because you're trying to please so many different type of musical tastes now with what we've talked about earlier with the throwbacks and new, and you don't want to feel like a dated DJs playing too much throwback music. Cause then you just sound like an iPod playing old song after old song. So it's really like a Tetris puzzle. Like I nailed that, shouts to that DJ who said that because it really is trying to put this yeah. puzzle together of trying to sound current, fresh, unique, but still knowing that the original version of Kesha, Die Young is going to crush it. Mm, like you don't have energy. to play a remix. Yeah. yeah. So that's not it, what I, it, I didn't quite expect that, honestly. I think maybe I'm not hitting those pool parties at the right time because I'm just seeing a bunch of retired people just sunbathing for some of these parties. You're getting booked for all the ones that have the... <laughs> these have a lot of energy that I'm playing at and I'm, and I'm also, I'm 44 years old. So I understand that the girl on the dance floor might be 21 or 22. So the, the era of the music that we grow up in is completely different. Starships to me is a very cheesy song. I never yeah. liked it when it came out, yeah. but I know that girl probably wants to hear that on the dance floor. So at, at what point... At what point do I cross the line and step out of my comfort and be like, oh, I'll just play this because I know this is going to go off? Or do I maintain my cool and be like, no, I want to play this different type of set that will incorporate maybe TikTok by Kesha because I like that song. <laughs> it's a guilty pleasure. We've all got our guilty pleasures. Guilty okay. pleasure, man. Yeah. <laughs> let's do uh, one or two. I think let's do one or two more of these. And then I still want to get some more song suggestions to add to this crate next. Oh, yeah. And no whammies, no whammies, big money. Stop. <laughs> Ooh, oldie Only but good. Only the real ones got that. Only the real ones got that. <laughs> Edward Maya. Oh. Pedro says one. So many ways you can remix this, of course. Pedro says zero. Wait, he said one, then he said zero. Vice says one, 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 one.
DJ N Nelson says, let's go. And Napoleon says, one. Why do I love this so much? Says DJ Gem. Justin says, one. Would you play this or would you not? Ones or zeros? Again, we're thinking summertime vibes. You got really excited, I have, guys. I have, so I have, a, that's a love-hate song. It's funny, just a couple days ago, I was flying and I was going through new music and I found a bootleg remix that's that I was listening to of this song. And I sat there for a like couple minutes and I was like, you know when you're about to delete it and you're not sure, should I delete it? Should I not? Should I delete? Should I not? And I deleted it. But right now hearing the original made me realize I'd rather play the original than yeah. the remix. And I think there's a lot of songs that are throwbacks nowadays that you have to make that decision. Am I gonna be the bootleg, wild, crazy, big room version or you know, of this song or am I gonna bring back the original? Was there ever and a time a where you were just exclusive, nothing but remixes or are you starting to bring... Yes, I totally was that time. It's only in the last six months, I feel, in the dance lane, in the dance lane that I'm like, do I bring back the original or do I play a bootleg version of it? So this is definitely like a question that always crosses my mind that I get stuck with. I mentioned Kish, Kesha, Da right. Young. That's because I've been playing the original in the middle of the house sets and just drop it in and come in and feel that energy of, oh, wow, here's a throwback. And it, it speaks to radio days of, we call them, Oh, wows yeah the, the recurrence. recurrence and we mm -hmm. call them like the oh wow records we're like so it'd be like hit oh wow hit so we'd always have that oh wow moment so i still have that radio mentality of if i am going to drop one of these records in i want to sandwich it around two maybe current or boot remixes of other stuff so it so that original really hits Brilliant. and really because feels like something that's right. I think that remixes bring a little energy to a song that is being burnt out or stale. And then after a certain point, much like the recurrent, you give it a chance to simmer. You give that time. I recall the time when Stereo Love by Edward Maya, there was at least 15 remixes mm -hmm. I create at one point. But now I want to bring back the original song because it's been so long. And maybe that's right. where, we're at, where we're starting to second guess ourselves. Do they always want the remix? It's good to surprise them. But I think that they're, they've caught on to our trick. They yeah. know that we're already doing that. So now can we bring in something they're very familiar with and work our way? Yeah. And it's fun to give the dynamics of the audio changing in the room as well. Because you have such big records playing of a bootleg remix. And then the original comes in and it's not as wide and loud sounding that this comes in that it feels like taking them back to like when they listen to it. Whoa. I never even thought about that. Like you stop everything and go into Will I Am singing OMG or you know it's just and the drums aren't gonna hit as big as that Fisher bootleg that right. has three three six mafia over it with Daft Punk and like three seven different layers of a mashup remix and then this original comes in and it just squashes you down and you're like oh shit I remember this so it gives you that feeling. Spin Diesel in the chat says when in doubt. I play the original then. All right, one more round of bump it or dump it. Then we're going to get two more song picks. Then we're going to, Vice needs the help of hackers. He wants to do some ring cleaning. So we're going to open up his hard drive and take a peek. But first, one more round of bump it or dump it. Give me one. It's no whammies, big money, big bucks. Stop. I was made for loving you by Oliver Heldens. Hmm. Oh my God. I'm going to stop it right there because number one, it was too loud. Number two, that song popped up two weeks ago in the open format hackathon and i had nothing but ones suddenly wow. the time it turned what happened <laughs> can i be honest i've i never, never i've never heard that song in my life okay so we know that's a, a rip on a kiss song from back right? in the day. it's obviously that cover music that's huge now i thought i never liked it yeah <laughs> and i had never heard it i know some a lot about oliver Heldens music but i never heard that one we're gonna bump it we're gonna dump it all right it. we're gonna dump it it got dumped <laughs> Help me spice this up. Let's add some more songs. What will be some Are you, Has Have you heard this Wookiee Edge of 17 remix? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, God. Hold on. We're going to pull it up. Yes. It's like know. literally probably my favorite remix I've heard in the past two years. Not going to lie. Yes. What's interesting, because he's usually was on that harder, like, Jersey trap vibe stuff. And then he came out with this remix out of nowhere. And I was like, whoa, this yeah. is fire. Yeah. Yes. Uh, such a big song. I'm going to turn this down a little bit so I don't blow your eardrums out. Ones or zeros for this. I'm going to see what's the ones. I'm going to be friends if you put a zero in the chat. 
I'm very biased right now. I am swaying the election here. Uppy PJ says one. Lots of ones. Bart says one. Ryan says one. Bookie makes great reviews. He really does. Carlos won. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We're adding that for sure. Oh, man. I got another one. <laughs> Bring it on. That's why you're here. Have you heard this Kings of Leon Sex on Fire? It's an original remix. It's on Spotify and everything. It's the Nitty remix. N I T I. Are you N-I- noticing more and more remixes on Spotify than ever before? Yeah. Hey, you got Glenn Rendis. Oh, man. Oh, go. let's yeah. go. So glad you're here with me tonight, man. What else you got for me? Feed, yes. feed me. Yes, the, I'm on. I'm I'm turned on right now. I'm turned on by all this music. <laughs> Favorite hackathon of the year, every year. <laughs> I have a good question to ask the hackers: Is are we all playing this White Lotus theme still for the summertime? Cool, moody vibes. This Dimitri Vegas, Steve Aoki, yeah. or I think is there a Geta version as well? I'm not sure. Yeah, but I have been. You know what? I need everybody's advice because. <laughs> I play it and I I second guess myself a lot when I'm playing it. I'm like, is this working? Is this not working? Is this hot? Is this not hot? I think it's relevant for what you're trying to do. If you're painting a picture of a summertime vacation, yeah. But yeah. it's going to obviously bring up a lot. It brings up some pretty <laughs> horrifying memories. If you, I've seen yeah. those seasons. That's a dark TV yeah. show. Uh, so I, you know, there is a... Tons of remixes of this. But there's a remix of it. There's, yeah. there's the Tiesto one underneath it. There you go. It's uh, getting some zeros. We're getting some zeros, but yeah, it's a lot like uh, to me. It feels like it's Stranger Things ish. You know, that was like during Halloween. I don't know. Maybe time and place for it, but definitely. And to completely just, if you want to just keep moving, I'll flip the vibe. If are we playing Rima Calm Down and is it working? Ooh. And the reason I ask that, the reason I ask that is I'm gonna be very honest. I feel like I can only play it in rooms that I know the crowd can dance. Because if you throw this in and you're playing hip hop and you're playing house, and you're playing hip hop and you're playing house and you go to this vibe of a Rima calm down and everybody's used to doing the two step, now you've challenged their dance skills and if they can actually <laughs> dance to a song. Does this make sense? <laughs> no, like- I know what you mean. Yeah, it's a weird, it's so sexy. Hey Brandon, good to see you buddy. Holding it down in Spokane, Washington. <laughs> My hometown. Yeah, no, I, again, it feels to me like a, I could see a Lumidy, No Letting Go, Wayne Wonder, if you're in that kind of But pocket. those are a lot faster, right? So this is a little bit in the tempo of where are we at with this one? It's at 107. Oh, yeah. It's that's, a very, that's the... you're, maybe Wayne Wonder yeah, would no work, work right there. You know what it is? Something it's like sexy, that. It's sexy enough that people that don't know how to dance can dance to it. Okay, so that's my issue in certain cities and certain rooms. Like if some, if, the crowd can't adapt and start dancing differently to this. You could lose the dance floor. I actually do keep that in mind. Like in Vegas, I can't play that in the middle of the night. It would just throw everybody off in, in the rooms that I'm playing in. I'm talking about for myself, like yeah, where yeah. the rooms I'm playing it. But if I'm in Miami and I'm playing in a smaller room, hands down, I can drop that record. And I know there's more of an international crowd there and they're used to hearing this on the radio and it's that vibe. So it really... For myself, it depends where I'm at and what I can play. But I love that record. Great song. You you gotta stay on your toes from city to city. Just yeah, your crates are so diverse, and that's what I want to focus on during this next session here. Are you? Do you have the ability to share your DJ software on screen with us by chance? Of course. Do I do share screen and do record box? Right. I can allow him to do radio. Is he set up for that? Oh yeah, he's close. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact, we're going to spend the next 10 minutes just taking a peek inside one of the most booked DJs in America. This is huge. It's very rare that we have a chance. Anything can happen. Be aware of that. But also, he wants your help. He wants to get some spring cleaning. Fun fact, I do know that he went from Serato to Rekordbox as of recent. I it? did, man. This will be the I did. This will be the most clean shot Zoom in history. <laughs> I don't mind. It's all good. <laughs> Sharing is caring. All right. So what do I do? I hit, I'm on Zoom. Who hit on share? middle, click on share screen in the center. Then, there it is. There, there we share are. Audio. There and share yeah. audio too, if you can. I don't know if you'd be able to. Share sound. Yep. Boom. I am right now in my crate that I played this past Saturday night in Las Vegas. Just exported it. And I. this is exactly what I played in the order I played it. Wow. So if, 
One thing that I've been working on is if I'm going to start my set, I'm always going to, not always, I'm going to do my best to try and edit one of my records, that one of my songs that I want to play to be custom to the way I play it. As a DJ, I was always inspired by all the house DJs that would come on with big intros and epic moments. And so this is a Cheyenne Gills Chainsmokers bootleg that, that has Nelly Furtado on it. I'm going to be smashed by the DJ who made this because just retagged it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We've all been there. Yeah. But I re-edit it just to be like, let me let me do this real quick. I think I need a I think on the audio I need a set right here, right? Do you audio. Setting, go to the top right settings on uh, the record box. I think you have to do the sound card out on Zoom, right? Yeah, does it say Zoom audio device? I think perhaps. Yeah, tell me if this is it. There we go, kid. That's it. Oh. So yeah, oh. so I just I re-edit the whole is it too loud? You're perfect. That's no, perfect, actually. Oh, see, so I edit the whole intro so I could just talk over it, if you can tell. So the whole intro is just redone so I can do my whole Vegas microphone intro and all that kind of stuff. But uh, that's what I started with. It's a, uh, which is, which is, I don't know if everyone's playing this, but the new Cheyenne Gills Chainsmokers record. Chainsmokers, yeah. you guys heard that? Uh, and then I just went. Wow. But I re-edit just, I'm, I like to explain this because I never got to hear this when I was in, like when I was listening to other DJs, but I re-edit it so that it could just drop to the, Cheyenne Gill's Chainsmokers version with no vocals and that because I just talked in the very first beginning part of this song and then I want just the beat to drop and then the vocals come in on the second part so that the crowd can finally sing along instead of it dropping and being vocals and being all crazy because I like to just have a moment of the track to breathe so these are things that I think of before I start a show instead of just grabbing the bootleg and playing the normal bootleg and it also hypes me up as a DJ because I just played something that I made an edit of. And I'm not just playing the regular bootleg that I grabbed off of a site. Yeah, yeah. So it just gives me a little bit of an energy boost. Oh, I, and I literally made it an hour before the show. So I do it within the couple hours before the show so that I'm excited about playing, the sh playing something new right when I start. You need an extra boost, not only for yourself, but for your confidence. You're gonna be coming in with something nobody's ever heard before. And at least you know that you put a little bit of effort into this and it gives you that like confidence. Oh man, I worked on this. And maybe it goes well and maybe it doesn't. And you're like, ah, oh, shit, I'll get them the next time. I'll but try now it again. with stems being that ability, people can do some really right. nice combinations on the fly. Right. Remember it for next time. But wow. Tons right. of questions in the chat. Tons of questions in the chat. Take your pick here. Some people are asking about, and this may just turn in more to a QA. I know you have QA for the hackers, but Alan wants to know why the switch to record box. And I'm scrolling down so you guys can see a little bit more because I know everyone probably screenshot it the first time. Oh, part. yes, they are. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll give you a moment here. So I switched over from, the truth is I was on Serato since day one when we got on Serato in 2005. And I am literally just hitting a year of record box. So s someone do the math. I'm terrible at that, but that's how many years I did. I did, yeah, wow. That was a long run of Serato. I switched over because one is I always wanted to I've always wanted to be able to be on record box to pull up on, on a DJ set anywhere and be able to play yeah. and not have my laptop. That was n number one. And I never, I was always like, Oh, I'm going to do record box and Serato and I'll be good on both of them. And I realized that'll never happen. <clears throat> I got to pick one or the other. And the next was, I want to challenge myself as a DJ. Now that I'm not drinking while I DJ, I'm two years, no alcohol while I DJ. I need to challenge myself as a DJ and try something new Wow! because if I'm DJing and now I'm not drinking anymore and I'm still on Serato and I'm just doing the same thing, I will, I might get disconnected to what I'm actually like my craft. So I was like, I need to challenge myself as a DJ again and start all over. And the old, oh. and another way I was like, it needs to be record box so that I can relearn a program, remake crates, try and figure out CDJs and looping and doing everything. So it just literally had me start over again as a but DJ. you've made a massive advantage for yourself. It's almost like speaking a second compatible language with your profession. There are certain departments yeah. in certain corporations where there's just a Latin language speaking person that that's a tool that they can use to communicate. You're mm. now, you're bilingual, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I, it's funny. I still like record my Sirius XM radio show in Serato because it's just so much easier. Of I course. hit record. And I do like that. But doing shows. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to challenge myself. And for anyone that has switched, I don't know if this resonates, if you guys want to throw one in the chat, but I, when I switched over from record, from Serato to Rekordbox, it felt like I went back to vinyl again. 
And the reason I say that is I had to be very specific on what I was putting in crates so I wouldn't overload a record box crate. And I had, and then when I picked that song, I feel really dedicated to picking that song. If and that I makes did, any sense. No, one million percent, Vice. You wrote it down literally by just saying the name. Record box to me feels like exactly that. So going back to the vinyl days, you would go, you'd go purchase the song, you'd buy the vinyl, you'd put it in a bag, you'd carry the receipt, bring it back home, put it down on the platter, grab the stylus, put it on, you'd listen to it. Then you might put some stickers on it. You might, mm -hmm. you might label that that album art and put it in a protective sleeve to me that is a long gone sad art that is but to me record box feels like you can really massage and curate this almost like that old piece of vinyl you can tag it and feel confident the q the q points feel like more solid for something for some reason record box brought me closer to my music collection than a serato or virgil dj ever could yeah for sure I can't yeah, it just it it challenged me again, and I think that's what I like about DJing, like just to the challenge of trying to figure out what's new from when we went from turntables to CDJs, or some of us might have went to virtual controllers or whatever you may use now. It's always just that, or learning during the pandemic, learning how to be a broadcasting DJ. That challenge <laughs> of like, all right, all right, I guess I got to learn OBS. Let's figure this <laughs> out. So all those challenges. I never got my lighting right. I was always terrible at my lighting. So I. That was always bad during the pandemic. Yours looks great, Aaron, by the way. I want to talk to you about that. It's off Thanks. camera. Oh, three years of just constant trial and error. <laughs> and it, but that's kind of like my grandma used to be, where she lived a very long age because she would consistently try to challenge herself. Like I remember 95 years old, she was still using crossword puzzles to keep her mind activated. Wow. If you yeah. stay the same way with yourself, if you stay stagnant in one piece of software or one particular genre, sorry, man, your brain's going to turn into oatmeal. You know, yeah, you yeah. Gone. I think it's just worth it, man. As DJs, if we're doing it for this long, just to change it up, challenge yourself. I have recently like deleted two crates on purpose. It was so hard. It was like breaking up with a girlfriend when you're in high school. You're like, I don't know if I can do this. I was like, <laughs> it's not you, it's me. Was, I was about to delete the crate. I was like, just do it. Just do it, Eric. Do it, Eric. Ah, delete it. Well, ah. You and I have quite teetered around this for over a year and a half now. And I know you're a busy guy, but you, I'm going to take whatever I can to do to help you. You've asked for help before. What can we do to set you on a better organization path? What can we do to help you? Thing that's holding you back? Yeah, I have a lot. I... It's funny. I have a seven-year-old daughter. So I would say hate is a strong word because sometimes she says hate. I'm like, hate is a strong word. I'm going to say I, I hate iTunes. I hate it. iTunes is like my worst enemy right now. Okay. And I went from Serato to Rekordbox and I'm still using iTunes and I need to get out of that because okay. it's just a disaster going from putting downloading music, putting in iTunes, organizing in iTunes, then opening in Rekordbox and then moving from Rekordbox into crates and yeah. Oh, okay, so I'm listening. I'm listening. Why are you using, just out of curiosity, why are you using iTunes? What are you using? He's our developer, I, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm all on, here. Let's go. I'll build it tonight. <laughs> I've been on, I've been on since day one. It's just all my, it's just my routine of, da I download music. It goes to my desktop, desktop into a crate in Serato, sorry, into iTunes. I filter through that iTunes crate to put it into the month that crate that I found it. Then I go into record box and I look at that month and I move it into crates into record box. It's such oh, yeah. a we're gonna Aaron, we're gonna schedule a DJ Vice intervention because that is <laughs> yeah, I'll share it publicly. You guys can do it online. <laughs> we'll rip what? through my whole collection. Glenn, is he not Ooh. doubling up his hard drive space by doing just that? Maybe more. Maybe more. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Let's take a look. It's I a mess. Love, I'd love to pick that apart with you. Because we mess. Have, I'd love I, to see that process. First things I'm, first, I'm man. I'm that DJ. I'm that DJ back in the day that his records were spread all over the floor, and you'd walk in, and you're like, "How do you do?" <laughs> you're like, "I know where it's at. I know my re that's over there, and that's over there, and records are stacked on top of each other and out of their covers and all that." Yeah. What is a fair number to you then? Because we're gonna have to break up with this girlfriend at some point. But what is this number in your head that's gonna cause you to feel comfortable? Because, okay, you're Miami. You're LA, you have to keep your crates pretty big, but what is a number in your head that's going to make you comfortable? How many songs can you have in your hard drive? For me, it's 3,000. Oh, What about you? Wow, that's a great number. 
I always go back and I realize I play anywhere between, because I play two hour sets majority of the time I DJ. I'm always playing somewhere between 60 to 80 songs a night. No, do right? me, take your mouse, go to click on collection up there at the top of record box. Oh man. There, you, what's the, there it is. 5,000 5, songs. <laughs> 5,115 songs. Wow, that's not too terrible. Okay. Not too terrible. That's only because that's not my iTunes. That's just what I had put into Record Box on my USB drive. Okay. Oh, that's just what you take with you. What's in your iTunes out of curiosity? How do you know that? <laughs> How do you <laughs> check you that? You open up iTunes and then oh, it goes to your yeah. library and you can see your total. Oh, Say it again, Radio. What was that? that? You open up your iTunes or your Apple Music and you go to your library and then you can find your total. You don't have to if do you it. want to do that, I'm more it, curious than anything. No, yeah. I want to. If you guys want to see this, let's do it. Let's do it, man. I'm a, like I said, I'm an open book here. Well, dude. first and foremost, the right. reason I'm bringing up the number is because at some point you're going to have to pull some of this stuff out of iTunes, which as a result may lose a handful of Q points and B grids if you're not smart with it. You got to yeah. pull it out and then you've got to have Record Box find it again. Do me a favor, go to the top left of Record Box. I know that a lot of other software has this. Similar yep, picture. I'm up there. What is it? Is it file or view, remove duplicates or view duplicates? What is it? Show me that. Go to the left again. Show me another tab. Import. Display all missing files. There we go. Hit that. Yep, click that. What did it, something pop up? Yeah, there's a good amount. I don't 104. 104. 104 tracks. We're not seeing it on the screen, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's 104. 104 tracks. Okay, so it would be a lot more than that if you moved everything out of iTunes. In other words, a thousand songs could be missing from that. And then you just have to point that to the file where you moved it. That's as simple yeah. as that. If it's currently being hijacked by iTunes, you pull it out, you put it somewhere else, and then you let your Serato virtual DJ or whatever just relocate the file. Now you're going to possibly lose some work, but with 5,000 songs or whatever, however, you, whatever that limitation amount might be, keep it under a manageable number, it should be all right. I hope this is also giving everybody in the chat like a moment to see that we're all there together. We're yes. all in this together. We all have a disaster iTunes at times, messy like tags on our comments, on our genres and everything like that. Like it's never ending. So it's, and, it's and level that's, 10 the, Tetris. that's the part of it, man. It's level, yeah, it's that's the part of it, dude. I like that we... I like that we always have something to do with our craft. We're never like caught up. I don't think I've I don't think I've ever felt like, oh, I'm caught up on my downloading my music and I'm got all my crates in order. We're great now. Like How I've never felt that. How long can you go <laughs> without pulling new music, without feeling that anxiety in the back of your head? Oh, I I'm not relevant anymore. <laughs> I just did two weeks. I did a vacation in Japan for two weeks. I felt like I was detached from the music <laughs> world. I felt like I was completely detached. I reached out to D a couple of my DJ friends. Like, what have you guys been playing? What's working? And I'm like, wait, it's been two weeks. I don't think the world changed in, in music, but just uh, two weeks of no gigs felt like an eternity for me. And I like that feeling of being like nervous. Oh, I got to make sure I'm good. I'm ready to go for this gig that it just keeps you on your toes with yes. where we're at. And in this summertime crate, as we're wrapping our heads around it, like that's what I feel going into summertime into these pool parties. Because I'm like, how am I going to differentiate my set from nightlife, dark, big energy yeah. to being like, ah, we're out again. The sun's out. <laughs> Shot, spray some water on me and, sh and champagne me down. Like however you want that vibe to be like. <laughs> That, what are those moments that we're going to be able to pull off with it? Does Calvin Harris feel so close? Just go to that again? Hard to say. Hard <laughs> to say. Here, what else we got here? Content. Just about ready to wrap up our session here with our good friend. But listen, I want to play one more game. You down for another game? Yeah. Let's do it. Stand by. So many things going on at once. By the way, is my screen, <laughs> what screen are we showing? Are we still showing my record box screen? Not no. at the moment. Oh, I'm trying to get over Don't to our it. next round. We're going to play a round of Rhythm Roulette. Okay, you ever cool. played this game before? Rhythm Roulette? No, but I'm down. Uh, it's simple. Rhythm Roulette works like this. It's a. We're going to go back to that crate that we built, right? And yeah. as a professional DJ, we're going to pretend like that song is coming to an end. We got like the CDJ flashing 30 seconds left and you haven't even thought about that next song to play. So we're gonna help each other out. We're gonna push play on a song and in the chat, you're gonna tell me what would be this song that you would mix immediately following this song. It's, it's called Rhythm Roulette. You down to play? 
Yeah, but I feel like I, I need to have my record box open on this. <laughs> That's <laughs> highly recommended. Anybody with their DJ software, you should always bring your working DJ laptop to a hackathon. Everybody should, just so you know. But okay. we're going to go back to our... Oh, by the way, I was looking this up for you. Vice, I'm going to drop this in the chat before we get to Rhythm Roulette. This is to help you get out of iTunes. I'm putting this oh. in the chat for everybody. Yes, I've yes. made two videos and two blogs to help everybody with that iTunes problem. So that's there for you. In the meantime, we're going to go back to the summertime vibes, createoftheweek.com. We'll get you there. Createoftheweek.com. Again, createoftheweek.com. It'll get you right to this page with us. And I'm going to have Vice tell me when to stop. Similar to last stop. time. Tell me. All right. It is landed on Ferrari by James Hype. Dang. Now, before I push play on this song, I want to let you all know this is a BPM of 125. And a key of 12A, if that helps. Tell me what song you would mix in the chat out of this song. And we'll get Vice's answer after the clip. Tony Davis says, helicopter. Tyrone says, Peppa's, good choice. Tyrone says, low. Todd Sickmiller says, no scrub. John Summit, don't stop the music by Kevin Patrick, good choice. Blue Dreams by Chris, good choice. <laughs> Simon says, bump, bump, bump by Vice. I'll give that one a thumbs up, too. Uh, hey. Vice, what would you play out of something like that? I would go into outside of my own record, Bump, because it is in this, it's 11A with mix right there. I would go into John Summit, Danza. I've been playing that record a lot. I love that record. Ooh, okay. Did that make it for a lot of you guys out there, Danza? I think it's like a very cool mix to bring in a Latin vibe, and then I can go off some Bad Bunny remixes or... Someone said it in the chat. I didn't catch it, but... That was me. Oh, that was you. Okay, B by who? By John Summit. Oh, there it is. La Danza. Oh. Sorry. La Danza. Summertime tequila shot. Oh, that's a vibe. That's a vibe. What do y'all think? You like? Tons of ones. Scotty with five ones. Kai says it's a slapper. Yeah. Uptown DJ, by the way, thank you for joining me both here on the hackathon as well as a kick. Let's talk about hit kick in a minute, but okay. So you're catching on. Let's do this yeah. from the here. Tell me when to stop. It landed on. Uh, oh, landed on calm down. Damn you, what would you, damn you 107 What would you play out of this? Nice, come out of this song. 107 is the beat. I got it. Slice locking his answer in. That Girls Love Money, Left and Right by Todd Sigmiller, Left and Right by Charlie Puth from, a, or Glenn recommended that. Vice, what was your suggestion? Tempted to touch, Rupee. Yeah. Tempted to yeah. touch, Rupee, yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. I was because just checking the recommendation engine and he nailed it. God, he nailed it. You all hear that? Totally. What a classic. That's so good. But that one's so, that'll never go away. That's such a great record. Yeah. Yeah. Any of that old uh, Lumity feel? Yes. The Sean yes. Paul sound. It's still there. I don't know. All right. Let's do one more round of this. I mean, By the way, this credit is available right now. If you want it, we'll let you have it tonight. But tell me when to stop. stop. Okay. Okay. Sunroof, the Loud Luxury remix. This is a 123 6B. Now uh, write it. Simon Lee, good choice. Black Eyed Peas, Tyrone. I got a feeling of choice. Yeah. September. Tyrone, you're a great DJ. Can I just say that? Every time you come in the chat, you're always like on top. Tyrone, you are on top of it every single time. Hot in it by Justin. Good choice. Vice, what would be your suggestion? Oof. Ah, uh, jeez. I love that you guys got me right now on this one. So it's very upbeat, very feel good, very... You said, my, you said the song's about to end, right? Yeah, 30 seconds left. Okay, right. okay. I, I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to give you guys something maybe some of you don't know. And I, it's the end of my set, because right here is like the happy-go-lucky feeling, and I'm going to go into Fred again, Billy. Ooh. There's a song called Billy by Fred again. Are you up on this record? Yes, yes. I would go into it because it's actually also 6B. Get the ones, get the ones. Come on now. Tony Davis, thank you. Happy DJ, thank you, Capo. Simon Lee with the one. All with the zero. That's okay. That's okay. You gotta give, you gotta give Fred again. You gotta give Fred again just a sit-down listen with a bottle of wine and yes. a sad night. You just got you got into a texting battle with your girl and you, you need that music. <laughs> That's pretty deep, man. <laughs> que question. And I'm gonna call myself out. I, is it a sample of an old school record? Yeah. Put your I, I didn't do my research. What is it? What I is can't that? think of the name of it. Put in the uh, chat, please, if anyone knows. You, uh, put, yes. You know, but I'll say this as Billy a Billy Ray as, Martin. Billy Ray Martin. Wow. So 
Yeah, someone, Alan Robertson mentioned that his boiler room set is fire. It is, dude. If you do his research on who he is, he's an established producer. The guy's been around for decades. Like, he's been doing music for a while. More people know that song than I actually knew. Like, I played it. I think that's a great summertime record because it's just so feel good. And it has a put your love in arms around me. And I think that after that loud luxury, it would come good in choice. nice and it could end the, it could end the night with some, pe- some hugs. Just reset the mood. Yeah. It's all we're looking no. for in life. Love. Give me some, give me some love. Give me some ones in love in the chat for our man, DJ Vice. Before we get out of here, I want to get some shameless plugs from him. Keep the ones pouring. And while I go over to his VIP section, I'm going to give you a peek behind the curtain of what the hell y'all are missing out on. This man is diverse to say the least. He hops from plane to plane, like the frequency of how many times I change my underwear per week. This (laughs) is constantly on the road and he reads crowds. We brought him in because he's learned from the best dude. He was chilling out, looking at DJ AM over his shoulder while he was playing. I kid you not. The man has a history and he wants to open his world up to you. If you unlock this side of the screen, you're going to see DJ Vice's VIP. Tell us what they can find in the VIP DJ Vice. We'll upload that crate that I just gave you guys that I played this past Saturday at Marquee Nightclub. But as you see, I did a bar mitzvah to playing 11 Miami at a after hours, 3.30 morning set to Aspen, Colorado, where everyone finished skiing and snowboarding all day. And now they're at a party. You can tell how diverse my crates get. You see a sidebar San Diego. That's like a 80% hip hop set right there. So my sets are all over the place. And once I think I figured it out, oh, I know what to play at this place. I'm always wrong. And, I, and I, that's what I love about doing this is that I always have to continually change up my sets, my crates. They're never the same. And yeah, of course, some mixes work really well together, but every city is so different for me. So I hope that gives you a taste into what I'm playing across the country. We tend to allow some peeks behind the curtain. We allow you to dive into particular remixes and find the pools that work for you and your routine. But it's very rare that we really get to look into the analysis of a set list from somebody like DJ Vice. So if you're ever curious on how pros do it, and again, that they have their weaknesses. He's exposed himself to you tonight on many levels, but 30 years in the game is something to really use to your advantage. I recommend getting to know more about the mentality of Vice. It's more than just performance. Vice, tell them why they need to be VIP, man. Let's get them in. It's it's a look into how I get around in these nights that I think I know what I'm supposed to play, and it's not. Like you see, you'll see me shift in the crate of changing directions out of nowhere, or you'll see me throw back to the Aspen crates—a prime example of me playing Fuji's "Killing Me Softly," where I don't get to play that at. Harris, someone mentioned Harris pool, like after dark in Atlantic city. So it's just adapting to every temperature and whether you travel or not, I feel everywhere you play in your own city can be so different. I grew up born and raised in LA and I would be playing hip hop parties to a rave, to a backyard barbecue, to a wedding to, so everywhere I had to adapt to different types of genres and styles. And also now with some of us being older in the game and DJing for a longer time that we're adapting to the 21 year old on the dance floor now and understanding the mentality of not being an old school mentality DJ that is not shifting towards the new school crowd that you're playing for. Doesn't matter so the that's age, some... as long as you're still in touch with what the pulse is and you're constantly striving for that. I'm striving for it. And I'm also talking to my 24 year old son and asking him what the hell. Oh, you got the intel. I guess that's one advantage. Have kids early so they can be your consultant. Yeah, yeah. my my seven year old's a little, it's a little off right now. So (laughs) she does love Miley Cyrus partying in the US. I bet she's going to come up the DJ booth with that request. So that was a big party request recently. Yeah. But yeah, the hardest Capo Don Juan, it's the hardest thing is playing that new stuff. There is a lot of, there is a lot of trash. There is stuff that you're like, oh, how do I get into this? I brought up Ice Spice earlier. It's, figuring out what works for you and also in how to play it. And if it's not, just don't, dude. I'm going to be honest. I have not played Starships by Nicki Minaj. And one of my (laughs) friends was like drilling me about it. He's like, dude, it goes off. And I was like, I just can't do it. I just can't. For me. I'm with you. (laughs) Certain ones you can do. But yeah, but then also it's like at some some points, yeah, just maintain your style. But at the same time, if we are, I grew up being a DJ for people to dance and get them on the dance floor and keep them there. So that's what I will always maintain being the party rocker. And I feel that's what's giving me the longevity in rooms like Vegas, that it's mainly booked by hard ticket selling DJs that put a record out and have notoriety and they're getting booked. I'm the complete opposite. I put out music, but my 
music is not what's booking me. It's the actual art of DJing that's getting me booked. So it's still there and it's still in the mainstream clubs and we all still can bring our craft to the masses. And the fact that you're even teaching it to the crowd, they're receptive and they're here for you. Before I turn this over, if you've got another 10 minutes, I'd like to get some hands raised. It's rare that we have a chance to ask questions to you. But as we do that, I'm going to transform over to Radio, who will do a little bit of Q&A. Before I pass it to him, though, it's still light where you are, and you haven't even hey. told me where you are yet. I figure it's appropriate <laughs> for summertime. Where the hell is DJ Vice? Let me, let me throw it in the chat if anyone ah. can figure out where I'm at. This is a very giveaway to all the people that might know. This is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. There it is. There what it are is. you That's doing in Hawaii, Hawaii, bro? Shoots, brother. Shoots. I am I'm bouncing between Hawaii and LA now a lot and everywhere in between. And I've set foot into Hawaii and the balance that a lot of us need in life, I think at some time of being grounded and just the wildness of 30 years, like you're saying, of DJing and nightclubs yeah. and everything like that. Now I reside a lot of the time out in Hawaii now, if wow. I'm not in the air or in a nightclub or somewhere else in a studio and randomly in across the country. You seem um, a little more, how long have you been there? Has it been? A, you see, I seem a little more tanned. Is that what you're going to Not say? just tanned, but there's a, there, there's a calmness to you. You've always been calm, yeah, man. but there's a little something. I, I, yeah, it's still the, you know, the energy of moving. I'm probably a, a, one of the very few, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this. I've never moved in my life. I've always been moving, DJing, traveling, bouncing around city. See, I've actually never moved. So I moved from Los Angeles and moved out to Hawaii. And I, I could say I'm living here. I'm not here long enough, but I come in and I kind of check back in and reset my vibes. And, and, and I got reinvigorated. To tell you the truth, I got reinvigorated because I changed up my setting. I saw some Will Smith video on TikTok or something, or maybe it wasn't Will Smith. I don't know who it was. Bad example. He slaps people. That's I saw some video just about getting out of your comfort zone as well. Yeah. And moving's a big one of them. I brought up getting out of Serato to record box, big on getting out of my comfort zone. I've never got out of my comfort zone of where I've been living my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I shifted it for the first time and I'm trying something new. And a lot of airline miles are racking up. So that's a plus. And the entire tour writer has shifted now because of time zones. <laughs> yeah, but on top of that, I think a lot of you, if, if you do get on an airplane and you have the time away from kids, if some of us are parents, as you get your own time on an airline in, a, mm, in an airplane, bliss. the time you get on that time you get, I'm not going to say iTunes, so I'm about to be off it. The time you get on your music, the time you get on your music is like priceless. It Just is. three, I would, the other day I was on my music, not iTunes, because we're about to be off that. I was on four hours straight of just going through music of just, just, and it was like, this feels good just to be like, yeah. you know, no one's going to, no one's going to interrupt me. There was no Wi-Fi. Okay, you no need for Wi-Fi. It's like the perfect time to organize your music is on a plane. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> hey yeah. friends, we, I want to give you all a chance to ask any question. I've asked them as many things that I want to know. I'm trying to squeeze as much knowledge as I can, but even the silliest question, even something that it's just been in the back of your head that you want to ask a full-time touring professional DJ. This is rare. Radio, take it on over and right. let's get some questions. Sure thing. Radio. So here's the rules, fam. We're going to let you at, we're going to have you do Q&A. And so to do that, first step at the bottom, there's a reactions button. Click that, choose that to raise your hand. I'm going to give you a chance to ask that question and I'm going to mute you because we don't have time for follow-ups and we want to get through as many other folks to ask their quick question as much as they can. No offense. Think of a really good question. I'll have you answer it. I'll mute you and we'll go on to the next guy. Nice. And, or yeah. yeah. Or she, they, him. <laughs> Whatever is politically correct. <laughs> all right. We got a couple hands raised. I'm going to go to you. Oh, by the way, please have your camera on so we can also add you to, to the conversation. So Alan, let's have you unmute and bring you in. So hey. my question is when you're practicing at your house, what controllers and what are you using to practice to meld your music together? Or do you not even practice at all? Great question. And this is perfect to explain that when I was in Los Angeles, I had the full blown studio, like looking nice, like Aaron. And I had CDJ 3000s and the 900 mixer and all that. It's all gone. It's all in Los Angeles, still set up. I have a Hercules control. <laughs> I have the little mini Hercules controller, the smallest little controller they make. And I have been using that so much. And I make my, there it is. I make my Sirius XM mixes on it. I test out little blends that I'm doing. And honestly, it 
gets me so pumped because I'm like, if I can do this on here, oh, easy. I got this on a controller on my 3000s and a 900. That's why you're doing your mixes on Serato because that only works for Serato. I've been looking for something like that small for record box. I got you. And I take it on the road with me. I travel with it. Yeah. I take it everywhere. So I will come up with something in my head. I'm like, cause I, I'm not good on the internal mode on doing Serato or record box and doing that internal DJing that a lot of people see and do. I can't do it. I don't know. But on that little mini Hercules controller, golden. And this is not a plug. I bought that. Thanks for that question. We're going to go on to Scotty. Have you unmute? Bring you in. Uh, hey, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, uh, this is just the worst question. And I can't believe I'm, I'm asking it, but sync button. Oh, it's funny it you brought that up. Yeah. DJ <laughs> Jazzy Jeff. I just saw a video of Jazzy Jeff explaining it. And I think all of us has, have been DJing here for quite some time. If you're investing in yourself to be on Create Hackers, then you're already serious about your passion and your career and what you're doing. I would say 99% of us know how to blend. We already know how to blend. We already do it. So what I feel about the sync button is when I got into sync button on HID mode Serato, I was all in for it because I could do so many crazier tricks of loading a song on the fly and it coming in and syncing and being on beat that I was like, I don't have to prove to anybody that I can blend two records together. Like I can do that. So I don't worry about whatever anybody else thinks. And it's just technology and going along with the ride of ad advancing. And if your sets can be even cleaner and it takes off that stress of like, oh, let me match the tempo. I already know how to do that. I, I know how to write a letter and put it in a mailbox and mail it. I'm going to email now. I'm less worried about sync. I'm more worried about artificial intelligence taking over. Yeah, but, but I think, so I'm game for sync, all good, but I don't know. I got to talk to you, Aaron, maybe about the record box. Once I got on record box, I don't use sync anymore because it's really off. It's always off for me. Oh, I know why. Where yeah. HI, where, yeah, where HID Serato, golden, mm -hmm. so perfect. Yeah, so I'm sync, bring it on. Can I learn how to use sync on Rekordbox again? Aaron, please teach me. Simple. So you take your, everyone watch my finger here. If a song is like a 128 or something like that, and it's pitched up to six over here and you're trying to match, sometimes you got to get this thing brought back up to get caught up in zero again. So if by chance this is down here, it has to be reset back to zero for it to be brought up and down again. You have to, uh. you have to teach this thing to, okay, wait, it's reading 128, but the pitch, the pitch is here. You got to manually bring this down, get it caught back up, and then it'll ride with you. You just got to reset basically the tempo slider. And then, got you. Am, am I, I right, Simon? Using yeah. Record box. You, exactly what he says. Every time you touch it, you just go really quick. So nobody notices it. Have you noticed that? That's exactly what I do. I've touched the sync button really fast. <laughs> yeah. One other thing I do, another quick trick, do the beat sync if you need to, but take that beat sync off immediately after. Never leave your beat sync on because it'll cause friction between the linked turntables. So if you're going to beat sync, click it real fast, uh... turn it back on, turn it back off. Should be better. Got you. Okay. I got to play with that. See, since the Hercules, I'm on the Hercules right now at <laughs> my house. I can't even practice. <laughs> sure. Okay. Let's bring in Todd. Have you unmute? Hey, Vice. Up, so Todd? over there in Hawaii, are you DJing at all? What's the music culture like over there? Yeah, that's one, one of the, one of the reasons I love living in Hawaii is I, there's no nightlife for me to really have to go out to and be around. So that the time I do get back to be around here, I have downtime of actually just like spending time with my family and my, my, my child and being in that mode that I don't have Los Angeles mode where I'm like, oh, I got to go to this event tonight. I got to go here. I got to go there. I get a lot of that still on the road when I go to these major cities. So really what's here is reset and kind of a routine that I get. And then I get more time to work on my own music and everything else. I don't have that FOMO, that late night FOMO. And I like that I'm going to bed at a decent time. Actually, though, I take that back. I still go to bed late. I still stay up late on my laptop and I'm online and I'm <laughs> still in me. I don't know. I, I don't know if everyone resonates with that, that I, I it's getting really I bad because like tonight the, we've talked about, we talked about a yacht rock channel and going to bed early. Yeah. What is going on with us, dude? <laughs> <And I'm> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't listen to it us, happens. anybody. We are no longer it relevant. Happens, we right? are your fathers. It right. happens. It happens. Oh yeah, God. no, but yeah, that's the good thing about here. It's just a, it's just a reset for me, man. It's just a, it's a reset for the mind and for the, for my energy and for, for my soul. It's pretty wild. These, that the nights that I'm still out a lot of late nights. So <laughs> it's I definitely needed to get back and get into a place where it's very chill. 
Cool, cool. Are we get, are still good with time, guys? Um, oh man, we got. Yeah, to- I'm chilling. I want to say I saw someone scroll up earlier. Someone gave me a compliment of being good on the microphone in a nightclub, and I thank you for that. And like Aaron, I grew up around radio. I was never a radio personality, but in nightclubs. I asked, I don't know if I've ever told you this story, Aaron, on one of the pods or not, uh-huh. but I'll share it again for some of the guys. I was at this, I was at this party and Ryan Seacrest was there. And I was pretty intoxicated on tequila. And so was he. And I asked him, can you give me some advice on the microphone? I DJ and I'm on the mic and blah, blah, blah. And, and this is, I don't know, 15 years ago. And he was just like, over pronunciate everything in the nightclub because everyone is so drunk in there that they're not going to hear what you're saying. Oh. And I was just like, want to take a shot? <laughs> Do you want <laughs> like, to take a shot? But it, it really resonated that I was wow. like, oh, that's why he always is over pronounced. And it's just a radio thing, right, Aaron? Like, you're very good at speaking on the mic. And I grew up going to hip hop shows and DJ, yeah, everybody. Ah! And I was like, oh, man. He's a like, chance to go to the top of the mountain and ask Ryan Seacrest. And that's excellent advice he would give you. That's really good. Yeah, advice. that was a, it was a good piece of advice. Yeah. But I do need to learn how to like really use the microphone because I, I lose my voice a lot. I don't know if anybody, I'd scream on the mic. I use my voice loud and when I do it, but I, I don't know what are you supposed to do from the bottom and like up. I don't know. It's just like, uh... doesn't, I, my, I've never taken vocal lessons or vocal coach, but that's something I would highly advise if you guys are really on the mic a lot. Some of you are wedding DJs and probably already have this down, but in nightclubs, being on the mic at a wedding, which I grew up doing with my boy Splice, he's in the chat, wedding emceeing compared to a nightclub emceeing is night and day. That's why I'm scared to get on a mic at a wedding. We've actually had people asking for, we did an MC hackathon last week and it was all about, oh. somebody called us out in the chat and said, that's only for wedding DJs. And I was actually, you know what? He's right. Because we don't have anybody to tell us what to say or what to do during a hype set at a club. It would be fun to have a little round table with you and another, who would be another good mic? Like who's one person where you're like, wow, that is one excellent MC and DJ. Oh, that they're really good on the mic. Both. Yeah. And a DJ. I don't know. I'm going to tell you the in, truth. I, it's, in the chat. It's, it's Luda. What Don says Luda. Oh, as far as an MC. No, MC. Okay. I, I could see little John, maybe little John would be epic. Oh, little right? John's great on the mic. Little John's great on the mic. Yeah. Little John. Yeah. And he's Little a DJ. John's great on the mic. Oh, he Scoop. is a DJ. I take that back. Yeah, these are like, these are no brainers. Like, they're yeah. great on the mic. There's gotta be other ones that out is. there, though, beyond that. Yeah, anyway. Because it, it, I'll be honest, too, though, like, more when the more I would drink when I was DJing, the more I would drink, the more sloppier my mic skills would be. <laughs> the more you thought you sounded good. <laughs> so I good. was like, yeah, I thought I sounded good. <laughs> That's I don't remember what I did. Let's bring on upbeat, these Upbeats DJs. Have you unmute? There you go. There it is. Are you there? Uh, almost. <laughs> Upbeat DJ. There he is. What is up? Hey, hey, how you doing? Good, good. Hey, I got a out of the groove question for you. How do you, since you're always on the go, how do you stay full of energy, fit? What is your workout regimen? Great question, man. Thank you for asking. Um, like I said, I'm 44, so I have to adapt. For myself, I had to cut, I had to cut alcohol. There was no way I could continually travel and bounce around city to city and pull a late night and try and come back home and be the dad I want to be. Like it just, it wasn't going to work. There was either or, and I'm either all in or all out. That's it. Like with Serato to record box, I was all in or all out. Like I didn't even bring my laptop the first time I showed up with record box. I was all in, like I went all in. So with is for me, I had to cut alcohol. I do a mile a day challenge. I don't know if I've ever talked about that, but I run minimum one mile every day for over five years straight. So I get up and get out every day. I had this, uh, I'm blessed to be around certain individuals that I'm able to ask for advice as well. The same way where you guys are able to ask me and I'm willing to give it. That's funny. I did an episode, this episode of my taco show a while back with Mario Lopez. And all, we all know Mario Lopez is roughly like our age for some of us in here. And he was like, I go, give me a piece of advice, Mario, to stay healthy. And he was like, break a sweat every day. That's it. He goes, pick your kid up if you have to run around in circles until you, your pores open up and you break a sweat. Whatever you have to do, just sweat once a day. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Oh. So <laughs> it was such a good little just p- nugget. So mine is just, yeah, I have to do that. Whether I'm anywhere I have to run, I try to eat healthy when I, as much as I can and balance out 
the intake. The same way I dig for music, I dig for research on a lot of podcasts for health and stuff like that. And just balance, just balance, man, just balance. I think it's like knowing that if I want to keep going at this DJs, we don't age out. We really don't. We're not athletes where our body finally shuts down and we can't do our passion. We're DJs. We can continually keep going until as long as we want to go, really. So <laughs> I want to keep going. I love DJ. So I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep my body able to keep up with all this. Glenn Renda says he is sweating just sitting there. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> it's it's the just iPhone. Just, <laughs> just iPhone. Just, yeah, you got yeah, radio? Yeah, man. Let's bring on Kevin. Have you a mute? This is the taboo question. At some point you went from doing bar gigs and clubs and stuff to events. I have quickly gone from making the $300 for a gig and whatever, $800 for a gig and whatever for a wedding to doing big events. I'm doing an event this week and it's 2,500 people. I was just offered to do an event in Vegas. You have 25,000 attendees. How do you know, first of all, even charging. That's, I think mm -hmm. every DJ that's here has had the problem where DJs, the business side is something different. How do you know when you make the leap to say to go to a booking agent versus handling it yourself? And how did you handle going from the Miami club paying you 500 bucks an open bar for the night to Miami club and you're selling tickets for people to come? How right. do you do that? That How do you know when your point is to jump? And Aaron might know that too, and maybe other people here. But it's new to me, and honestly, I've been doing this since 1980, and I am like deer in the he headlights. Yeah, props for doing it for so long and still sticking with it, man. First and foremost, that we know it's your passion. And I think for myself, I always know I've never been the negotiator. I, I was never, even in like high school when we would get gigs, I don't know, my boy Philip would have even attested. I don't think I was the really good one at figuring out the money and how we should get paid. I never wanted to be the bad guy. I always wanted to show up at the gig and be the, oh, we're happy you're here. So it was always someone else booking the gig and getting me in there. That being said, that doesn't mean that that can work for everybody. If there is someone that you trust, like it doesn't have to be an agency. It's someone that understands who you are as a person, first and foremost, like that they're able to speak on your behalf before you go into these gigs and has to know your craft. It can't be your friend that works for as an Amazon Prime delivery driver. And he's, oh man, I love seeing you DJ. I can handle it. No, he doesn't know anything about DJing and the nightlife and the business or anything like that. It could be as if someone that actually was a DJ, did audio lighting, did this, that can understand that who can negotiate for you. If you're not a good negotiator, that's the first and foremost. If you're able to do it yourself, I think we all know our worth at the end of the day. Like we all know what we should be getting. I definitely will speak openly that my rates fluctuate where I'm at. It's different. Every city is a little bit different because it doesn't mean here's my rate and that's what I'm getting. So it just because I'm playing at a Las Vegas nightclub compared to Cincinnati, Ohio, it's different. You can't pay the same. Let's just be honest. They're not going to be able to afford the same. Like it just, that's the way it is. And I'm not going to be here. I get paid the same everywhere I go. It's not, dude. It's not that way. So the same way you're getting paid for this, for the gig you paid, you played maybe a few hundred people. And now there's a thousand people in there. Yeah, your rate has to go up because it's a bigger event and a bigger platform for you to be playing. So I think that with that being said, I don't know the number, but I will say that I think deep down inside, we all know what we're worth in that gig in that moment. And I think it's just standing there and holding your ground of not going lower if you think it's worth, if they're going to lowball you. Because even in my spot, I do get lowballed. It happens to me. I get lowballed in different cities. And I just don't take it. I have to hold my ground because once I go under, you're not coming back up unless you have something that blows you up, whether it's social media, a hit record or something like that. But once you step down, you're not coming back up. Wow. Very true. Very true. All right. There's our good friend. Bring on DJ Nate Nelson. How many more? You want to do? Let's do three or four more after this. Yeah. yeah. We're going to okay. lock it down. Yeah. What's Word. up, Nate? What's up, man? Eric. I told you this in Scottsdale or in Arizona last year, wherever we were, that you were, you've been my like biggest inspiration as far as being a DJ goes for sure. As far as health, family, like everything that you do, you're passionate, you drive, like you, you said it, you're either all in and that's the mentality that I think we have to have. My biggest question is the bump record is a remake. And there's so many remakes out there right now with get up, putting stuff out. Do you have any new remakes in the work? And do you think that the art of 
making new music is disappearing or what do you feel like the, because I feel like everything's in a rotation and it's coming back and people are just taking everything else and music is samples and so much music is all these other things. Like what is your take on the remake side of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. We're the best MC I've ever legit. <laughs> I go to, I go out and watch DJs all the time. Cause that's where you can find inspiration. And I've seen you at marquee like 10 times. I've seen you all over the place. I've seen you in Dallas a few times. You are by far one of the best MCs as a high end club DJ that I've ever seen. So. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. I'm still working on those skills as well. I think it's like a never ending to say the right thing in the right moment when the right record hits, like just those little radio. And I take a lot from radio as well, Aaron. So just the timing of saying something right before a hook comes in or giving you that emotional bump that everyone needs, especially now coming out of this COVID era and just keeping everybody united. Cause like when we go to party and we're DJing, we're really like giving everybody escape from all the bullshit that they're going through. So just keep that in my mind that everyone's here to just escape and have a good time. And we're the soundtrack for that night. So thank you for that. As far as music, I think I do have some records I'm working on. I flipped an Aaliyah sample that I'm trying to have it resung and recut. And I get excited doing those, even though there's so many of them out. I think it's because going back to what we said, so many throwbacks are so relevant that I'm like, if I want to, if I'm going to play a throwback with throwback R&B vocal or something like that, I want to work towards at least playing one of my own. I was, I, the bump, the B, it's a B2K sample, which like... I never really, I never played that original like as a throwback, but I was like, oh, it's such a good hook, man. I want to use play that. Really and, Can we just give it a little yeah. sample, a sample so they know what we're talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. Funny enough is, uh, is I had to have the vocals recut for that because we couldn't use the actual B2K vocals. So those were recut and re-sang. And the hard part about those records, at the end of the day, it's clearing them to actually be an official release because R. Kelly wrote that. Whoa. Everybody knows that. Yeah. R. Kelly and Diddy. I did not um, know that. That was a Is complicated it, it, it's process. It's got to be getting easier, though. It's a, to piggyback on that, though, we are noticing more and more of those covers. And we brought that question up. Maybe the answer. Has something changed legally to where it's just easier to get the rights? I don't know the legalities of it, but I think that record labels are realizing that wherever they can make this money, they'll make it. There's a side piece, a Millie Little Wayne remix out now. Yeah. Uh, earlier, I played that Sex on Fire. Edge of uh, 17. That's out. Edge of 17. Yeah, so there's so much. And I think it, all that hypes me up because as DJs, these are the records that kind of, they work for us. Like I, I'm in rooms that I'm not breaking new music all night. That's not my lane. I've never been in a DJ that I can play two hours of brand new music in my set, of brand new dance music. It doesn't happen. But yeah, I think that I'm into the fact of these still being reson- resonating and these throwbacks are working. And on that, I'm very interested if we're going to see trance come back with calvin harris's miracle record god i is heard that, that one. happen I, is that going to happen it's only okay my opinion yeah it's never going to be as big as it was unless somebody comes in and totally flips it but it's just a cyclical pattern that we constantly deal with it gets faster and faster we saw that the tempo rise and it's just going to get to that extreme before it resets itself so of course we're going to go in a more trance direction Cal- calvin's 143 i think his yeah, record is, is like 100, 143. So yeah, I'm not ready to make trance records yet, but I do like trance. Uh, I'll be waiting for DMB or some drum and bass. Let's just bring that back. Yeah, we'll yeah. All around it. For sure. All right, a few more. Let's get to this. A few more. Last three here. Let's have Rob come join us. Hey, Vice. I have a technical question for you. So you were talking earlier sure. about your your last minute remix that you put together for your Vegas set. Mm. And I'm wondering, what do you use for that? I'm a virtual DJ user. Went from record box to Serato to record box again and settled on virtual DJ. I use Audacity sometimes because it's really simple to make remixes. I'll use Ableton. I took the DJ Ragoza course through through whatever was offered here. And that was super helpful. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious, what do you use for that? Yeah, just Ableton. Just Ableton to whip together like a quick edit. I actually got that mindset from Chucky. If everyone knows DJ Chucky, he told me one time when we were out, he was like, Vice, make one edit at least every time you DJ, even if it's someone else's bootleg, whatever, just make one edit of that you get to play that night that you knew you edited it. And he goes, because eventually your set is gonna be so many edits of versions uh-huh. that the way you wanna play them. He's like, think about it, he's like, 30 gigs later, he's gonna have a, you're gonna have a crate of 30 of your edits just ready to go. 
And they could be as simple as I want to chop out this verse right here from this edit and it just doesn't work for me. So it's even just a cut, and, a cut and truncate and make it shorter. Like it doesn't have to be like a mashup and all this and, and layered vocals, just edit however you want. Like I said, I edited mine so that I can talk in the beginning of my set and then the track will come in. So it gives me that just percussion hats and I can have my open space for me to talk and then my set starts. Wow. Good advice. Great advice. Let's bring Kay on. Oh, Kai, sorry. Hey, what's going on, Vice? How you doing, man? What up? Hey, man. Someone, someone, I do like that you've been in the industry for over 30 years, working with so many different people. I guess it's kind of like a two-part question. What's the best advice you've gotten throughout your 30-year career? And what's your model that you live by day to day? I think the best advice was, it's, it's so simple. And so don't just treat everybody as you want to be treated because the way I walk into a club, I treat everybody the same way that I would want to be treated from the bathroom attendant to the door host, to the security guards, to someone saying, you know, when I walked out of the Vegas club on Saturday and I had already walked past the security guard and one of them was like, yo, good set advice. I made my way to turn back around and come back over him and shake his hand and say, thank you, bro. I appreciate that because I just appreciate everybody doing the job. Like we're a team in that nightclub, right? Every, he, I was safe that night because there's security guards. I was, the bathroom attendant took care of me, had to be a towel, like whatever it may be. Like everyone, I just want to be treated the same way I would like to be treated. And in the long term of things, like you never know where people are going to end up. And I'm not doing this out of the fact, oh, that guy might become a GM or a host. But one of my friends who was a busser is now the GM of a major nightclub in Vegas. So it's like, you just, and me and him, I was cool with him when he was a buster. I just knew him as a buster cleaning up the tables. Like at, that's what he did, right? And I was like, oh, what up, man? They always said, what's up to him? So it's like, that's a big, that's a big kind of ongoing way that I just really want to live my, and that just goes to going down the street to a 7-Eleven, bro. I'm going to be nice to the person. It's, I don't have, I just try and live on, on that kind of vibe with everybody. And I think it's just, it, what you put out there will come back to you. And on the second part, the motto I live by is it, all these are real simple, man. They're not, it's just do what you love and love what you fucking do because I <laughs> love DJing. I fucking love it. I am. It's, in, it's crazy that I, I'm, I genuinely want to be here. I like talking about DJing. Like it's, it fuels me. Like it excites me to be around other DJs that are this passionate because it's rare in this industry now that you find DJs that are actually passionate about DJing. They're not just passionate about how can I become big on social media and start DJ? Like it's, we're all here because we're actually passionate. We don't talk about, about music wow. enough, Vice. We don't talk about music. Yeah. As an industry, we are not talk the reason why we are stagnant in the hits is because we as DJs are not reporting back. This is working. Don't play the song anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's, and being open about it, like what we're doing here and an open like dialogue and conversation and you hearing from me and possibly seeing the places I play through social media and knowing that I go through that same mental like moment of playing Ice Spice and being like, should I be playing this? Does this really work right now? Or I don't know about this one. Damn. Or when I played, what was the most recent one? When I played Jack Harlow first class and I was like a, a verse and a hook in and I was like, We have been is, on that song for the past God, six months debating that song this, in particular. <laughs> I remember when it came out, I was like, I'm going to try this. And I was like, <laughs> this is not working. This is bad right now. I All need us, to get out of this. Every quick. single one of us. So yeah. So I hope that kind of gives you a vibe of my thought process and also the way I look at life. Thanks. Let's end up bring in Devin. Last one, Devin. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Vice, it's an honor and a pleasure. My question as well. My question would be your mindset for building sets, especially if you don't have a client or anybody who's have given you a little key beforehand. What is the thought process going into building sets and all that? So I definitely don't build the order of my set, but, I, but now with Rekordbox, I will say this. I actually prep a bunch of music in a crate. Like I get excited to be like, so I, some of you were on vinyl back in the days and you had to go to a gig and you had to be like, all right, what am I going to bring to this gig? That's what the mentality is now where I'm like, oh, going through songs. All right, I want to play this tonight. I want to play this. I want to play this. I want to play it. And I make a crate of whether it's 60 to 80 songs and they're not in any order, but I know I want to get to this. And I want to be like, yo, this is what I want to get. That being said, even though I have those songs in there, my set has to shift. And I'll be open with that. In this, in, in this gig I was at not too long ago, and as I got told by the owners, like, yo, can you just switch to hip hop? We really need you to play hip hop right now. We have some football players in the back. They all bought bottles. We're about to come out, blah, blah, blah. And 
Diplo, this is one of the gigs Diplo is at, and he's there with me. And I'm like, I look at him, I go, bro, you don't go through this anymore. <laughs> That's what I said to him. <laughs> because I'm like, this is what, this is like, I'll be honest, I'm the fucking, I'm the, I'm a working DJ. Like I, I play the room. I'm not there to be like, this is what I'm doing. If, oh yeah, I'm not going to play it. But I, I'm going to, I want to continually work as a DJ. I don't have that stance where I'm like, nope, not playing that. Whatever about those football players, I'm playing what I'm playing. I, I could, but are they going to book me there again? Maybe not. Because if you, if I have that stance and I know how to play hip hop, I grew up on hip hop. It's not that I don't like it. It's just, I knew what was working for the room. And I, the only way I held my ground in building my set around this, I said, yes, give me like 15, 20 minutes. Cause if I switch it right now, it's going to ruin the room. And they were like, all right. And I kept going and I did my thing and I adapted into the hip hop set, not just switch to hip hop and go like that and kill the whole moment. Right. So even though I had that set, thinking this is what I'm going to play that this creative music majority of the songs were not anything I played out of that. Got to read the room. Got to read the room. Know your audience. <laughs> and, and understand that I, that owner of that club, I've been working with him for 15 years. So I know him, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to do it. I understand it's a business for him and I understand my role in this situation. So I, and that's the longevity, like treat, I want him to treat me the same way he wants me to treat him. So I'm like, yo, just, Give me the ease of 15, 20 minutes to get into that. Because I know the bottles are going to come out and all that. I get it. But let me get into it and still be a DJ and work it the way I want to get to that point. This is why he's been voted one of America's best DJs. Friends and ones family, the chat, good time. In the chat, y'all, get some ones. Let's get the ones yeah. going, y'all. Appreciates his, his answers to your cues, folks. All the ones. Absolutely. Yeah, thank y'all. Absolutely, y'all. That was a blast. That was DJ Vice hanging with us tonight. And again... VIP, get behind the curtain, learn more about his ebb and flow. And there's so much to it that I'm going to say, please come back. Please join yeah. us. Again. Please do. And uh, any final words? Oh, man. If any of y'all see me coming to your city, feel free to hit me up. I would love to be have you guys come through, check out what I do and play in these cities. I have some gigs. I don't I have Philly coming up. I have, I've mentioned Miami. I have, I think I have, I'm going to Kentucky Derby in a couple of weeks. Oh, what? Seriously? Um, yeah. Shoot me the dates. The Shoot me the dates. I'm, I'll come see you. I'm oh, yeah. It's near Nashville. Yeah. I'm playing right next door, baby. I'm playing Kentucky Derby. I'll be there for two nights playing some gigs out there. I see that crazy. Damn, I got to get it. That's just reminding me. I got to get an outfit. So let's talk. Right. Let's make some arrangements. <laughs> Listen, it's getting bigger and better. Don't you agree? Do you feel like we're on the floor? I'm asking the chat this right now. Do you feel like these hackathons are really taking off now? Like we're having a good time with the format, the flow, the guests. We're bringing in big names. We got Vice hanging with us today. Next week, we got Drew and Fuse kicking out with us. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm so stoked for them. Vice, you know, network for us. Bring people in. Let's, let's learn not just about their prowess and their stage performance, but if there's some DJs that wouldn't mind sharing these kind of secrets, we would... I know who I want to get in here. Talk have you, you guys haven't had DJ Spider, have you? We've been begging for Spider. Oh, yeah, we need Spider, man. He does so many good private events from like Netflix to Apple to like yeah. to really legit. He owns that lane of the A list. Yeah. I mean, his Bill Murray story. Have you heard his Bill Murray story? Well, I'm oh, dying just to have God. that show and to hear that story. I'll listen to the whole thing, man, because he's just, yeah, or is, he's got a is Quincy Jones. He has a Quincy Jones yeah. story. Like he has, yeah, he has some epic stories. I'm just the whole DJ. beat source crew in general, DJ city beat source. We got to have them back. No question. But yeah, man. Yeah. So spider would be, and he's the funniest dude. Yeah. He's funny. Yeah. So spider <laughs> would be, yeah. I want to pick through spiders crate and look around. We can do that later on. In the meantime, DJ vice, catch him online again, anytime in the clubs and we'll catch you next week as we do another crate hackathon. From Nashville, Tennessee, and across the nation, thank you for joining yeah. us every Tuesday. Make sure to add this to your calendar. If you feel like you do not have a community, if you feel like you do not get your questions answered, and you have that Serato face just tearing away at you, listen, every Tuesday we are here for you. This is the Crate Hackathon. I am your host, Aaron Trailer, and with that, happy hacking. See ya. <laughs>